Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Head on over and start your free trial at squarespace.com slash rogue and get 10% off your first purchase. Outside of Wolverine and everything else besides the Terminator that Arnold Schwarzenegger does, who are... Ron Perlman. Oh, Ron Perlman, of oh, course! Hellboy! Hellboy, Hellboy yeah, smokes Hellboy. cigars, All right. right? Sylvester Stallone, Jack Nicholson, and Jim Belushi. Hey, hey, wait a minute, is that the internet? Is, is that the internet? You, you can't use the internet? You guys were stumbling, so... You mentioned I, these I like fine. it. How he mentions all these tough guys, and then he says, and Jim Belushi. <laughs> the modern rogue knows what a cigar is. All right, we are here at Roma Craft to Back with Skip Martin and Michael doing? Rosales. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very conflicted right now because half this area I'm very well versed in and comfortable with. The other half I am in, this is all foreign currency I'm looking at right now. We know nothing about cigars, but you guys are gonna give us the basics. You know, it's one of those things where you, you know a few things, you can enter into it and not look like a newbie. Bing, bing. Eventually I'll learn nuance and flavor, but right now I do not want to look like an idiot right. walking into a cigar joint. What is the yes. number one thing? Where do we begin? Well, I think the number one thing is, is there's perception by non-cigar smokers that cigar smoking is this luxurious rich man's habit or has this macho testosterone field uh, filled uh, you know aura around it. I'm not it. getting that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but really cigar smoking is really uh, very much like wine or uh, craft beer. It's very much about uh, just jumping in with both feet. It's very approachable from a price cost perspective. What kind of price ranges uh, can you expect to pay for a cigar? You can find some great, really good cigars from $3 uh, up to $500. I gotta admit, I like to say, you can find really great, uh, good, <laughs> passable cigars. <laughs> you can find one down by the train tracks. You can find pretty much any kind of premium cigar between $8 to $10 and then kind of going from there. Okay. Or so, even so, or even less than that. You want to buy long filler premium cigars from a tobacconist. And generally a tobacconist is a type of store that specializes in tobacco products. And they'll have a room called a walk-in humidor where the long filler premium cigars are stored. And the people that work in that store will be very knowledgeable and generally very open as long as you follow some basic rules. Here's a big idiot question. Uh, what separates a cigar from being just like a big cigarette? The cigar is 100% tobacco, whereas a cigarette is really made of a homogenized tobacco paper uh, and a bunch of chemicals thrown in on there. Fiberglass. Uh, in fact, some it, of that yeah, too, you, yeah. You take it lighter than that, you can make a blade out of that. This is so. sounding way more appealing. Yeah, so tobacco is an actual plant, it's a flower. We take the flower off and we use the leaves. Uh, the leaves are used either whole uh, or they're used in part. I notice your hands are, you say whole is, is about the uh, uh, apple pie shaped uh, or size? Well, some tobacco comes seven, eight inches. Uh, some tobacco comes as, as long as uh, one leaf would be maybe two and a half feet. What are the basic types of cigars? There are cigars that are made by machines and there are cigars made by hand. And the machine ones, I assume, are more consistent in their in some way. In some ways, because because the tobacco can be more precisely formulated within the cigar, sometimes they are more consistent. And is that just a personal preference thing, or is it universally kind of? It is known, Khaleesi, that it's better to have a hand rolled one. Well, in America, in general, uh, what we consume in terms of cigars is we consume hand rolled cigars. Uh, in Europe, the machine-made cigar is far more popular. Really? Why is that? I think it's, it's their I think primarily because they smoke smaller cigars in much larger quantities. And so the machine-made cigars are more economic to produce. Is, is it as simple as eyeballing it and saying, well, this has lots of imperfections, it was obviously hand-rolled, or this one's super consistent, it must be machine-made? No, they're a little rougher on the texture. Sometimes, but sometimes it's really hard to tell. Uh, we work with a company in Germany that's been making cigars for over 100 years, and their processes are as, as uh, stringent as ours, even though they use machines instead of uh, people, torcedores that roll by hand. Okay, so you got machine-made and handmade. What are the subcategories underneath? Most machine-made cigars are mixed filler or short filler. So they take tobacco, chopped up into little pieces, and put it inside of a whole leaf. Most hand-rolled cigars are all long filler, Sometimes you'll find what's called a mixed filler cigar that has short pieces in the middle, but in general, it's made up of all long fillers. So wait a minute, when you say 100% whole leaf, that's like they just take one giant leaf and just keep rolling until all of a sudden it's the size of a cigar? Some cigars are made that way. They're sing one single leaf. That's a very specific type of cigar, more of a rustic cigar. Uh, most modern 
Long filler premium cigars are made up of multiple leaves from different parts of the plant from different countries. Think of it like a blend. Like we learned with scotches. Right. Uh, if you want oh, a blended yeah. scotch to yeah. get a consistent right. flavor profile, you take a little bit of okay. X, Y, and Z. So if you glance down at the, uh, I don't know what you call the chopped off part. This is how bad I am. <laughs> yeah. and, and you see a bunch of little short pieces going every, like particle board. If it looks like particle board, I would imagine that's mixed filler. Whereas if it looks like it's looping around, that means it's single leaf. Well, it's very hard to tell sometimes by looking at the foot or the crown of the cigar, the head foot of the cigar. Crown. Was, it just slipped my mind. Those <laughs> yeah, are the yeah, words I was, I was, I was about right there to say. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to say anything. So. <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's pretty hard to tell uh, whether it's, you can generally, when you're smoking it, tell by whether or not short pieces come off into your mouth and generally how long the ash holds. Let's say I walk into the store, I go into the humidor. Uh -huh. Excuse me, I walk into the tobacconist. I go into the humidor. What do I look for? Well, generally they're gonna ask you a few questions. Most walk-in humidors are all are gonna be exclusively long filler premium cigars. They're gonna come from one of three countries, most likely. Dominican Republic, Honduras, or Nicaragua. The most popular cigars in the world, worldwide, uh, because most countries don't have an embargo, like the United States, are cigars from Cuba. And the long filler hand-rolled cigar tradition uh, was created by the Spaniards in Cuba. So do you think do you think that we're on the cusp of seeing that embargo go away? Are we about to see a flood of Cuban cigars in the United States? Well, there's a that's a really complicated answer. The the short answer to that is most likely not. Now because the FDA has regulatory control of cigars, uh, even if the economic embargo ended allowing Cuban products to be uh, imported and sold in the United States, there's a long process for those cigars involving registration, also intellectual property uh, disputes that they have with other countries, with other companies. It's a whole legal quagmire. Wait a minute, yeah, yeah so, so I guess you're right, because obviously tobacco is heavily regulated, there's all these regulatory hurdles to get through. I didn't even think about the branding hurdles. In the late 1950s, when the embargo began, uh, the early 1960s, the families that owned the companies that made some of the most famous cigars in the world, Romeo and Julieta, Partagas, these, these families that owned these companies sold the rights of those names to U.S. companies. And can, Cuba continued to make cigars under those names. So when those are required to be sold in the same market, you're gonna find uh, long-standing disputes around the trademark. And they're probably two very different products. They are very different. You actually can buy Cuban cigars and legally bring them into the United States. Uh, one of the changes under the Obama administration was it allowed you to buy Cuban products while you were traveling abroad as an American, where previously you weren't allowed to buy anything that was Cuban, uh, even consume it in Europe, for example, or in, in any other country. Now you can buy a personal use quantity and bring it back in the United States. You just cannot commercially market and sell Cuban products in the United States. When I look at these, I see different configurations and shapes. Does that affect the flavor? And is there different names for the shapes that we're seeing? Yeah, there's a long, long list of names. Most of them come from the standard Cuban sizes. In general, when you're looking at a cigar, you're looking at a thing that has three basic parts. You have filler, which is what we've been talking about, mixed or long filler. You have a binder, which is a leaf that contains the, and, and uh, wraps and around the This is usually filler. one full tobacco leaf wrapped around. Right, the binder is usually one leaf. And then you'll have a wrapper, which is a more aesthetically pleasing uh, leaf that goes on the outside of the cigar. Really? So it's not just filler and paper, or filler and wrapper, like I would think. There's... No, there's actually a binder that actually physically holds the cigar together, and then there's a wrapper that contributes a lot of the flavor and a lot of the way the so cigar So the flavor goes. comes from all of it? The flavor comes from all of it. The ring gauge of the cigar, which is measured in 60 fourths of an inch, so if you had a 64 ring gauge cigar, it would be one, one inch, inch in diameter. Wow, that would be a big, thick cigar. The most popular size in, in the world, I would say, is particularly in the United States, is maybe between 46 and 52. And then based on the length of the cigar, they have different names. When you have a small ring gauge cigar, more of the, of the flavor comes from the wrapper. When you have a larger ring gauge cigar, more of the flavor comes from the filler. When you talk about the size of a cigar, what you're talking about is what they call Vitola. And this is the shape, the length, the ring gauge. There's really two types of cigars. There's Parejos, which are the normal cylindrical cigar that looks more like what you would normally think of a cigar and has a rounded or flat top. 
And then you have what are called figurados, which you'll see with, with pointy edges or bulbous middles and, and a bunch of different okay, shapes. Okay, so, so one looks like the traditional cigar that Grandpa had, the other looks like a, 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 a big doobie or like, something. Like the one Baby Huey was smoking in the cartoon. Yes, okay, yeah. great. And, and those two names Deep again. cut. Parejo. Parejo. Yeah, figurado. Parejo is the standard Normal, cylinder. Standard. Figurado is, is the, the Baby Huey. And what was the name you used for the shape? All cigars figurado. have different different names. Like, for example, this is a what we call a small perfecto. And it's big in the middle, small on both ends, pointy on both ends. Uh, these can come from a 50 ring gauge like this one up to a 64 ring gauge where it's very bulbous in the middle. Oh, this is great. I'm already speaking the language. So 50, uh, 50 ring gauge means it's about 80% uh, of an inch, uh, about, give, or, yeah. give or take, right? And then, uh, and, and, I've already forgotten the other terms. That's how fast the, it goes. The length of the cigar in the United States is generally measured in in because uh, we don't you know we don't use the metric system. Got it. It's measured in inches or parts of an inch. So this is a five by fifty perfecto. Perfecto is a specific size name. That's the uh, and perfecto is roughly what like a hand span, give or take. Well, perfectos can be three inches or they could be nine inches. That's what I tell the yeah. ladies. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna say something. <laughs> right. Sorry. He's gonna say something. So, th so this figurado is a small perfecto. It is five inches long by 50 ring gauge. Uh, like I said, it's produced in Nicaragua. It has tobacco from four different countries which is, brings us to an interesting point about cigars in general. If you go back to the early 20th century, about 80% of US men smoked cigars. Mm -hmm. Most of them machine made, a lot of them hand rolled, but almost all of them produced in the United States. Hmm. So the origin of where it was manufactured was not super important. What was important is whether it was a puro, meaning the wrapper, filler, and binder all came from one country, and in this case, the most popular was Cuba, because less expensive cigars or lesser quality cigars would use to cheaper tobacco from other countries or mixed filler. And the Puro, which is also the Spanish name for a cigar, a Puro, was considered the, the quality, gold standard. The gold standard. They may have cost you somewhere between five, 10 cents even back then. Wow. What happened after the embargo, mostly after the embargo, the people who, who had the knowledge of how to make, how to grow, cure, and ferment tobacco and have it hand rolled into a cigar, those people spread out outside of Cuba, mm -hmm. these families that have been doing it for centuries. So a lot of them moved to the Dominican Republic, some of them moved to Honduras, and some of them moved to Nicaragua. Which is why those are the big three outside of the other one. That's correct. Now, is it because they have a, a supply of good tobacco? I think this, it's the knowledge, This family right? knowledge, or is it both? It's both. Tobacco is an indigenous plant, or what they call criollo, or native. Different regions have different types of tobacco that are suitable for lawn filler cigars. And those regions uh, are, are very similarly situated from the equator. They have tropical environments, meaning uh, they have a, a, a specific rainy season and moderate weather. And they generally have volcanic, or soil that's that's from erosion from mountains into valleys. And so this creates a, an environment that's very suitable for growing uh, this kind of tobacco. So I think one of the things that when you talk about well, we kind of started off was when you go into your tobacconist and you're asking them, hey, I want to, I need a cigar. You kind of have this wide, uh, you know, selection, right? So hundreds the, and hundreds, hundreds, right? And, and all in them, one little small little area. So I think the very first thing that you always kind of have to ask yourself is, is how much time do you have to dedicate to smoking a cigar, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, hour and a half. Oh, I didn't even think about that because right. that's a different experience, yeah. Right. Along with that is a cost difference in how long that is. And I think Skip can kind of tell you about some of the different sizes in the Vitolas and, and you know, kind of like with 45 minute to an hour, hour and a half. And, and some of them are gonna burn faster than others. Some, yeah. There's not a huge difference. Generally, the, the length of the cigar is gonna determine how long it's gonna be to smoke it. Short fillers but burn But the very first thing that a tobacconist is gonna ask you when you walk into the store is, if you hey, I've never smoked a cigar. I watched this uh, episode of <laughs> the, the on YouTube. Rogue. I saw two <laughs> doughy middle-aged men <laughs> teach me about right. it. <laughs> I feel I feel like I know just enough to be dangerous. So the very first thing they're going to ask you is is Do you want a cigar that's mild or do you want a cigar that's strong? And generally, what they're trying to get toward is is two aspects. And you think of it like you think of beer. Strength in a cigar is like ABV in a beer. You're talking about how much nicotine there is in the tobacco. Generally, if the cigar has more uh, higher priming uh, leaves in the filler, 
it's going to have more nicotine. Then they're going to ask you about body, and body is generally more like flavor. Like a stout may have a completely different body than an IPA. One is light and crisp, and one is heavy and dark, but both of those types of beers could have the exact same ABV. This is a very common misconception is that darker cigars are, are always stronger, and that's not always true. So what they're going to try to do is they're going to say, do you want a cigar that is strong or do you want a cigar that is fairly mild? And you're probably going to want to start off with something that's mild. Yeah, because yeah, you always hear stories about uh, people smoking a cigar and suddenly they're vomiting. Oh, it's yeah, too turning, much literally them. turning green and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, not and that, me, because <laughs> come on. And that's, that's kind of another great point, which is cigars are not smoked to be inhaled the way cigarettes are. It, I've been smoking cigars for 25 years, eight a day-ish. I cannot inhale a cigar. Uh, cigars are meant to be consumed. And tasted, uh, right? And tasted with your olfactory. The smell generates a lot of the flavor aspects. Some of that comes from the, the smoke, and some of it comes from the tobacco actually This in is your also mouth. very similar to what we learned with whiskey. We learned about, you know, enjoying, not, not just, you know, snorting it and inhaling right. it, but as you, you open your mouth a little bit so that you're able to get the wafting and you can appreciate it in, you know, as it uh, fills your sinuses, I guess. Right. right. When it comes to preference, they're gonna ask, is it mild or strong? And then they're gonna ask about the body, is that what you said? They're gonna ask you, do you want a approachable, mild flavor, or do you want something that has a lot of flavor? Do you want it to affect your mouth? Like, do you want it to like hit you on your on your palate or your mouth, or do you want to feel it like the way you kind of get a little dizzy? Ah. Right? <laughs> oh, got it, got it. Okay. Or both. Got or it, both. got or it, both. got it. Oh, that's right, because there are some beers that you drink to get drunk, and there are other beers that you drink because you want to experience the taste. Well, I right. think that's a good point because the other thing that you want to talk about is, you know, if I was gonna ask you like, hey, well, have you had dinner? Are you gonna drink? You know, what are you drinking? You know, is it gonna be a bourbon? Is it gonna are be we a whiskey? Pairing whiskey, it right? With you, right? Yeah, you want to pair. You want it to complement what you're going to be doing in that situation. Right? Got it. To keep are you, you from, going to be mowing your yard, yeah. or are you going to be sitting in a chair in a closed room where you can absorb the aroma and enjoy more of the nuances? Okay. I want something where I'm standing in front of a bunch of armed thugs in suits, and I'm telling them <laughs> that Brian Brushwood must die before the sun comes <laughs> right, up. Right. By the way, people already think you look a lot like Castro. We, we don't need to enhance this image. With my green jacket and <laughs> my military hat. So the next thing they're gonna ask you is about the size, how long do you want to smoke? Generally, the best bet if you're just starting off is to start with something that's medium bodied, that has fairly mild in terms of strength, that is a smaller size, large enough ring gauge, maybe a 46 or greater, where you're getting a good volume of smoke, um, but not so long that uh, it, it becomes uh, a full-time commitment. Like a chore to smoke it. Like yeah. a relationship. Yeah, because yeah. you feel like <laughs> when you're smoking a cigar and you realize I was not ready to commit to this, <laughs> right. but I don't want to waste it. So right. it's like, I guess I'm going to sit out here on the patio for the next 13 Seven days. hours. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So going back to what we were saying about uh, the Puros, we have these cigars from the four countries we mentioned. We have Cuban cigars, we have uh, cigars from Nicaragua, we have cigars from Honduras and cigars from the Dominican. And each one of these, we have them lined up between the mildest to the strongest in terms of nicotine impact or percentage. And then we have a wide variety here of uh, different uh, flavor profiles. One thing that all these three categories, Nicaragua, Dominican, and Honduras have in common is almost no cigars produced in those countries are Puros. They generally contain tobacco from two or more countries. Hmm. Oh, this is the blended thing we were talking right. about. Yeah, and then the Cuban cigars here are Puros. The wrapper, filler, and binder are all from different regions within Cuba. Different parts of the plant yield tobacco that are different types. So Seco, or the lowest portion of the plant, is thinner leaves. It has a little bit less of an impact on flavor, less impact on aroma, and has very little strength. Seco. Seco, Seco is is it okay it for me to dry. think kind of filler, basically? Yeah, these are all filler components. Got it. So Seco is generally used to promote combustion. The next level is Viso, and Viso tobacco is there primarily for taste, flavor, and for aroma. Then you have the higher priming leaves, Lajero and Corona, what Cubans may call Medio Tiempo. These leaves are there for really strong flavors and for a lot of nicotine impact. When they're asking you whether you want a mild cigar or a full flavored cigar, what they're really kind of asking you is, do you want a cigar that has a lot of low priming leaves, it's mild, a little bit flavorful, or do you want a cigar that has a lot of high priming leaves that is really strong and has a lot of nicotine? Or 
a cigar that's in the middle that has, has a blend of those different parts of the plant. We have three brands here from the Dominican Republic. The, on the mild side, you have Davidoff, one of the most popular non-Cuban cigar companies in the world. Also maker of cool water cologne. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, they actually make more on those, the, the licensing than they make oh, on making they? cigars. <laughs> That's awesome. But Zeno Davidoff is one of the pioneers in uh, the outside of the non-Cuban uh, market. He's from Geneva, Switzerland. It's probably the most widely uh, sold brand in the world, made in Santiago, Dominican Republic, primarily. Uh, this is a Serie R. It's very mild. It has a medium flavor, a lot of great flavor, tobacco flavor, earthy, those kinds of things, but, and it burns extremely well. The problem with this type of uh, brand is you're going to pay northwards of $12, $15, up to $500 per cigar. And a lot of that is just because of the brand's reputation. The second one here is a brand that became very popular around the boom when Cigar Aficionado came out, and there was this resurgence of long filler premium cigars, early 90s, early 90s uh, in there. Arturo Fuente is a Cuban family that migrated to uh, the Tampa area, hmm. produced cigars in Tampa for a long time, established themselves in Dominican Republic, and they make some of the best cigars in the world. This one here is a box-pressed Figurado. You can see it has a square shape to it. Oh, box-pressed is the square. Okay, because I didn't even know. I, 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 I forgot that there were square cigars. Right. So this cigar is a very limited one, but still approachable at $12, $13, and an extremely high quality cigar. This cigar here is more medium uh, in strength and in flavor, body. Uh, then you have another Dominican cigar called La Flor Dominicana. This is cigar is used is primarily from high primings on the plant. In fact, one of their most popular brands is called Double Lajero, so it's almost all tobacco from the top of the plant. This one is a, is a limited one called Colorado Oscuro. It's very flavorful and very full strength. You go to the next country, Honduras, you have uh, the mild uh, example here from Julio Arroyo from the Jamastron Valley. One of the, this is a Corojo uh, type tobacco, which is excellent. Uh, Corojo type, is that a strain of tobacco? Corojo is a strain. Oh, I didn't uh, even think about strains. <laughs> there's I got, a lot. I got, I, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot to learn. You know, what I'll tell you in general, when you get into that level of, of interest in the, in, in the hobby or the uh, passion for smoking cigars, there's a great resource called Tobacconist University, where you can actually become certified as a consumer as I'm someone who really knows uh, a lot about the history of tobacco, how cigars are made, and how to enjoy them. That is amazing that when something is so complicated, you could take a course to become a certified consumer of a product. I'm right. trying to think of something that I know this much about, and the only thing coming to mind is like X-Men comics <laughs> from the 90s. Yes. This Spider-Man, maybe. This, this middle brand here is a great example of a brand that where there's a company that owns brands, but they don't actually make their own cigars. These cigars are made in a, a factory called Racy's Cubana or Cuban Roots in Honduras. And then you have Rocky Patel, which is also one of the more popular uh, brands in the world. Very uh, good value, six to eight dollars, and more on the full flavored, full strength side. In Nicaragua, uh, where we make our cigars, there's an example here of a milder cigar by a company called Illusion. It's a small craft boutique company like, like us. Um, this one's called the Ypernay. You have another one of the more popular brands in the world, Padron, which oh, is a yeah. Cuban family that, that went to Nicaragua. Uh, this, this Cuban here is medium strength, medium body. And then this is one of our cigars. It's called the Neanderthal. It has tobacco from five different countries. It's a Figurado, and it is very, very full strength and full flavor. Oh, wow. That's why you call it the Neanderthal. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's, like, yeah. it's like the dark roast coffee of, of yeah, cigars. Yeah. yeah, this is, the, uh, expert this is the expert level, yeah. Let's see how much we were able to hold on yes. to. Four countries, right. Cuba, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Honduras. Hey, very good. Uh, uh, the, uh, the diameter of the ring is what? Uh, uh, Ring, ring, ring. ring gauge. Ring gauge. Ring gauge. And ring gauge is expressed in what fractions of an inch? Uh, Sixty-fourths of an inch. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, shapes? Shapes. What are the different shapes? Uh, there's box cut. Uh, there. <laughs> no, no. That's a shape. <laughs> is it? Look, it's a well, shape. I know. Man. I know. But that. But that. But that's a subcategory. It's of... It's a subcategory of a different oh, shape. Figurados. Yeah, it's figurados and. Mm. I want to say Vitruvian. Vitruvian. <laughs> <It's> Vitruvian <laughs> cigar. <laughs> 
It's, it's all his fingers have cigars in them. Parejo. 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 Yes, which is different from puro, which means that it all comes from the same country. That's correct. And That's what right. are the three parts of a cigar? The wrapper, the binder, and the filler. Correct. Ooh, somebody's got it. Uh, and there's also three different parts of the plants. The plant, the part down at the bottom is mainly filler. Uh, the middle one is middle. <laughs> and the one on top is the more most robust and flavorful. Sivo. Seco. Seco. Yeah, I've already f***ed it up. Never mind. Seco, which is second, comes first. Oh, that's helpful. <laughs> that, yeah, now you just made it harder for me to remember, actually. Right. Thank you. So here's the, here's the greatest thing about this. Always go to a reliable, dependable, knowledgeable, experienced tobacconist. Let them know where your experience level is. Don't pretend to know something you don't. And they will walk you through the process. Really, at the end of the day, a uh, cigar is about understanding the craft that goes into it, the tradition that goes into it, the difficulty in, in creating one, the time it takes to create one, and then being able to, to understand how to enjoy it. So you're telling me not to buy cigars from the guy that sells behind no, RVs? No gas station. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this is the same kind of thread that we get on the beer episodes, on the on the whiskey episodes, is- uh, That we are Jon Snow. Uh, yes, we know nothing, <laughs> for one, but also that if you approach with humility, everybody's super excited, and that one of the wonderful things about all these different uh, vices, forgive me for saying, is that you are actually consuming the essence of the land from which they came. You're, you are in some form world traveling when you experience a cigar from Honduras or a, a whiskey from uh, you know the highlands of Scotland. That's true, right. and, and don't be a chooch. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe this, this might be the most important <laughs> word we're I've, about to learn. I've heard this before. I think Rubio actually called me this one time. But yeah, a chooch is a guy that walks in, pretends like he knows more than he knows, asks about whether they sell Cubans, cuts half of the cigar off when they go to light it, and then uh, <laughs> essentially does everything wrong while under the guise of pretending he's an expert. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll squeeze it and, and, and finger f*** it to death. Oh, and, Jesus. <laughs> and, they'll, and what they'll do is they'll damage the cigar or they'll put, some, sometimes if it, if it has cellophane, they'll try to smell it through the cellophane, <laughs> which is made of cornstarch and it does not uh, you can't allow smell you to it smell at through all. the cigar. Right? And they'll go, oh, it smells good. Or the right. worst chooch is the one who actually puts it in their mouth and then puts it back down. Oh, on the... that's, that's very choochy behavior. <laughs> yeah, if... <laughs> Look at it nails at the hardware store with Brian. Yeah. Brian just takes out a nail, opens the package. This is good. I don't even put it in my nose. And I'm just like. <laughs> and then the worst part is I finish and I'm like, no, not that one. No, that doesn't work. Back in there. Takes it out <laughs> of his nose, puts it back in the box. If you, if you lick it, you buy it pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a chooch right. uh, and be humble. And I think, man, I think we're in for a really experience. What do you want to experience first? I want to experience something that's going to knock me on my ass. Oh man, you're gonna get that Neanderthal. We're going for the Neanderthal, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> Hello, I would like something mild uh, in a smaller ring gauge, uh, maybe perfecto sized. Yeah, you, you sounded a lot better than I did. <laughs> Since you look like a guy of discerning taste, we're gonna let you start with the Davidoff. Oh, uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is uh, Honduran? Chooch. Damn! <laughs> you got chooched! <laughs> you just got chooched! All right, we're, oh, sorry, what I should have said is, oh, and where is this from? Yeah, because you don't you don't know, you can ask the question, and since we're reliable tobacconists, we will tell you that this Davidoff was made in Santiago, Dominican Republic. Oh, that's great. And then, and now, how does one uh, classily ask, will you please prepare this for smoking for me? Yeah, almost all tobacconists will offer to do that for you, so after you go to the register and pay for it, They'll be happy to cut in and help you light it. All right, well, this, this is the international symbol. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, right away, sir. So as we light up here, where can people see all of your awesome socials? So our company, Romacraft Tobacco, uh, is uh, based out of Nicaragua and Austin, Texas. We have a Facebook page, Romacraft Tobacco. We have an Instagram, Romacraft Tobacco. From there, you can find Mike and I's individual Instagrams. And if I were going to walk into a tobacconist and ask for Romacraft Tobacco cigar, could I do that? Absolutely, a good would, tobacconist. Would they know it by that name or any of the multiple brand they names? They would know again? both. Great. Another thing here is you want to put the cigar between your teeth mm -hmm. oh. and put your lips around it. All right. You don't want to hold it in your lips. Oh man, that's good. Thank you guys so much, Skip, Mike. This is fantastic. I feel enlightened. So does the knowledge help you enjoy it more? Yes. 
the, the knowledge that I'm not a, 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 cho a chooch. chooch. <laughs> oh, you're a chooch. You're a chooch. How about this? I'm gonna hold it. You're a chooch, Brushwood. It's too good. <laughs> you're a chooch. You'll always be a chooch. Dude, how are you feeling about the modernrogue.com? Need some work. All right, well, hold on. Are you it's, saying it's you don't good. like it? It's, it's really good. We just need more. Yes, and that is why Squarespace is awesome. Not only were we able to remain completely ignorant and dumb as we set it up, and yes, if you know CSS and all that stuff, you could do magic wizardry in here, but we you were able to get it. You Exactly, exactly. Recently, we were talking about adding a whole blog section to the show with written content, but the question was, well, like, well, who's your provider? Because we have to design a back end and it may not support a sudden influx of traffic and all that stuff. And I said, it's like, oh, I don't know, it's on Squarespace. Yeah. And you know what the guy said? Oh, that'd be great, actually. Oh, boom! Perfect. So now we get to grow the site. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, man, it makes it so easy. They've got modules that go in. If you want to remain ignorant and dumb like us, they have award-winning designs. It's going to look great. It's going to scale so that your site stays up when it gets super popular overnight. And the best part is, if you head on over to squarespace.com rogue, you're supporting the show as you sign up for your free trial and you get 10% off your first purchase. I really want to see some of the amazing stuff that our viewers have done with Squarespace. Ooh, that'd be great. As a matter of fact, yeah, everybody at home, if you guys have made a Squarespace site that you're particularly proud of, post them in the comments so that we can feature them right here on the show. I want to see just how far someone can take this really robust utility. How involved can you make the website? Absolutely. Squarespace.com slash rogue, free trial, 10% off. You'll make us look good and you'll get the best in the biz. There's no reason for you not to. That's their new slogan. <laughs> Squarespace. There's no reason for you not what to. What have you got to lose? You, no reason. There's yeah. no reason.